Good evening, and welcome to Talking Sugar with Dandy Live. I'm Jackie Tomlin. I'll be your host this evening. And with me is Dr. Ben Latuan, the podiatrist here at our Southside office. It's October, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so we thought that we would talk a little bit about cancer of the feet. Cancer of the feet is called the great masquerader. And that's because sometimes it's very difficult to tell if you have cancer of the foot or not. So Dr. Batuan is going to give us a little bit about cancer of the feet. What are some of the signs to look for? And we want you to be always aware because our goal at Antioch Foot and Ankle Group is to prevent toe, foot, and leg amputations. And so the more you know, the better you'll be able to take care of your feet. And we hope that you'll allow us to take care of your feet for you. Dr. Petulin. Thank you, Ms. Tomlin. So can skin cancer of the feet, as most people are, think of cancer, they usually think of uh, skins that it's exposed to the sun. And as you're aware, as you are all aware, we usually have shoes on, socks on, or something like that on our feet, so it's not like the feet is actually always exposed to the sun. But there is still a possibility of you getting cancer to your feet. Sometimes, you know, it is the skin, uh, it, your skin is exposed, uh, your feet is exposed to the sun. But a lot of times it's just because there's just some lesions that's on there that can become cancerous. Uh, and sometimes it's just the chemicals that, that can cause the cancer to come about. So what you usually look for, uh, as, you know, a lot of people have seen little spots, moles, and other things that's on their feet. Uh, you look for, uh, you know, these moles, and you observe it, and if, for a lot of you, you probably have seen it, and you just don't really pay attention to it. So what you want to try to do is, you know, you check for your feet and your toes, because you can actually get cancer right under your toenails. And under your toenails? Under your toenails. So, oh yeah, so a lot of times, if you just see, like, you know, little spots, because I have something that's not really cancerous, because I've actually looked into it. I have, like, a little a line on there, and thought it's, it's more like a little mole, but this can actually later down the line, I'm always checking on the side to see if there's any changes. So you're always trying to look for changes uh, to these lesions. The, the color changes, if the shape changes. Uh, a lot of times you, you, you know, what you're looking for is like different color changes to the, these lesions. And if they're gotten bigger, what, you know, what usually what they're saying is that it has to be um, like bigger than the, uh, um, the tip of the, uh, an eraser, actually the, the eraser tip. So if the lesion is bigger than an eraser tip, then you're questioning whether or not it actually is cancer. The, the, bar, the bad part is you're really not sure what it is, because a lot of times the, they could just be moles, and people are like, oh, I, I have cancer, I have cancer. But if, if you're unsure, you know, you can come to uh, the podiatrist here, me, or you can go to the dermatologist or go to your primary doctor and have them look at it and then have them determine to see where you need to try to go. And a lot of times we'll just check, like I said, we'll look into, you know, the size and uh, the, because there's the, what we call, hold on, let me see if I can find it right here. It's called the ABCs of skin cancer, the asymmetry, so if it's, a lot of times you'll see a mole circular. Now if it starts to, if one is slightly bigger than the other side when you like look in the middle, yeah. okay, so that's, a, basically that's what asymmetry is. The borders are regular. A lot of times, you know, you see your moles and all this other stuff, it's very circular, like really what, uh, what we call well circumscribed, so it's like a big circle. So if it's like a big circle like this, but then now if it's, you know, that more or less is just more of a mole, but now if it starts to get a little jagged or it starts looking like clouds and stuff like that, if that's how it's shaped, that's another thing that you look for, then the color is changing. A lot of times when you see your moles and stuff, it's just like it's either just black or brown, but now if it's starting to get like reddish, brownish, all these different colors, now it's you're starting to question them. So you have to look for a lot of these things. And, I, and the other part is, like I mentioned earlier, like the, the, the diameter of it, so how big it is, it's just the size of the, um, the, 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 the eraser. But you know, when, 
you really it's hard to tell exactly what it is you just look at it so you know once we evaluate it first thing that you will usually ask is you know is there a family history of cancer because okay. then if there is a family history the likelihood of you getting it is very high so what we tend to try to do is like you know let's look at it you know um, a lot of times there's actually what they is called a thermoscope we, we actually don't have one here but we can just evaluate it and actually I have like a, a um, uh, uh, glasses that can actually um, uh, magnify these skin lesions in front of me, and I can just look at it a little bit closer. And um, you know what you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, and, 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 and with the change, then, and uh, you know, it, even after I look at it, it'll be a little bit difficult. But I'm just like, well, you know, it, it's it's very questionable because it's not like you're, it pops out and say, oh, I'm cancer. Right. So a lot of times, what we end up trying to do is, of course, we're going to have to biopsy it and then, you know, send it out to confirm what our diagnosis is. But that that really points to the fact we tell all of our patients that are diabetic mm -hmm. that you need to look at your feet every single day. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people say, well, I can't get my foot up. You can buy a mirror mm -hmm. that you can put up against the wall or you can buy a hand mirror and look at your feet. But what you're saying from um, the cancer of your feet aspect is that whether you're diabetic or, or not, not exactly. you always need to pay attention exactly. to your feet and any changes, and changes in the to, feet. And then changes to like the little moles that you have, you just, you have to observe it, especially like that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, if there's a family history of, of skin cancer, then it's likely that you know it, some of these can actually change. Another thing that we've done, like talking about diabetics, if there's if there's a wound, a lot of diabetics come in with open wounds, and so we're concerned about like how why is it taking so long? A lot of times we might have actually have to biopsy it, and then come to find out there actually might be the, the wound might have have uh, converted into a cancerous lesion, and that's why it's probably not healing. Um, are there any other like you talked about? Uh, something being under the nail, yeah. And then you talked about uh, some a mole and it changing shape mm -hmm. or changing color. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other um, uh, signs that we might just not pay a lot of attention to? Well, it's more like the changes. Like for me, like I, I you know, it's I know it's hard for you all to visualize this. I actually have a strip. On my nail I can here. see it. Yeah, there's a bad, uh, uh, it actually had been here close to about six, seven years now. I would have thought you just bruised your finger. Yeah, and that's exactly what I thought. Now, uh, actually, I, I went to a lecture one time and they did show me something similar to this. And then they uh, actually magnified it and saw something growing on the side of this. Now, it's not even growing, it's like a different coloration. So it became actually, so instead of just this straight line, now there was something like another color right next to it. And, you know, if you're not really paying attention to it, you'd be like, oh, it's nothing. And it was very slight. But you're trained to pay but, yeah, attention. Yeah, I'm so that's why I try to look for a lot of these things, just to make sure that, you know, it's like, okay, like the other day I was asking the patient, it's like, okay, are you concerned? And I can biopsy it. You know, she delayed it at this time, but I told her, like, we're more than willing to biopsy it. So if you're, you know, for us, it's just hard to diagnose it because you can't just say, ooh, that's cancer. It might look like it until we actually biopsy it and send it out then we can say yes it is and then we can determine where we need to try to send you and most you know a lot of times we'll end up sending you to the oncologist the cancer doctors okay but it's but it's good to have your feet checked yes but once a year you yep. have your feet yeah. checked because some of the things that we can see and i'm telling everybody to use a mirror if you can't get your foot all the way up mm -hmm. but the thing is when a person comes in um for an appointment then here that's you're looking for everything yeah I, I, even I if they're out. not diabetic and, you're still looking yeah and sometimes like you know i, I actually evaluate every patient that comes to the office uh, and a lot of times I'll ask, oh, what's this? How long has this been here? And, you know, like if, if, if there's moles, I don't always say, oh, if, because if I notice that they're there now, you as a, you know, the person, like the patient, will actually have to look at it. It's like it, it looks like it's gotten bigger because if it's starting to get bigger, it's not like I'm measuring all your moles all over the place, but right. you yourself, it's like if you notice, like, well, has that, that well, changed? Has, has there been that change? And then I could look at it a little bit closer. I'm like, well, okay, you know, it could be. Let, let's biopsy it. 
Okay. What about um, um, just a skin discoloration or um, uh, I know that if you're diabetic, a lot of times your feet will get uh, will be more dry mm -hmm. and cracked and we tell our patients to make sure that you make sure that you moisturize your mm -hmm. feet and moisturize your skin yeah. but oh, definitely your feet would that be an indicator at all or is it just the mole or a discoloration of the toenail more the mole the discoloration not just a, it's 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 not like your skin is just discolored now if you have for example a toenail not a toenail, but a, a, the skin around the toenail, a lot of people get the ingrowns. And if you leave that alone for so long, those can actually start to, you know, maybe turn into cancerous lesion. And a lot of times we'll just, like I said, we'll take it out, send it out. So it's not like, oh, you have this big old patch, but however, if the patch changes colors. Okay. So it's, you know, it's it, because it's not like if you have pale skin, it's like, oh, look, it, now it's all red. Well, it, it's not going to that it's not going to be cancerous that fast. Yes. So a lot of times, well, especially with feet, because a lot of people don't actually check it. It takes time, and then that's usually when you know when we finally actually see a lot of these patients. It's already for the fully developed, and it's you know and, you know because no one really has checked their feet, and it's one of the last things people actually check. And so, you know, what, you know, what, you know, Ms. Tom and I are, are recommending, and you know, we were always recommended to patients, whether or not you're diabetic or not, just to come in and just to have a, you know, have a foot check every so often. With diabetics, you know, I feel it's, it's the more important for you to come in because there's a lot more problems that come about with, with being diabetic, like Ms. Tom said, this cracking, and then some of the other parts with cancer. Sometimes if you, there's like extra bleeding, you're like scratching in this the flaky looking skin. So it's, it's a discoloration, but you, it keeps on bleeding. And you're like, well, now it's questionable. Is that cancer? Because Especially if you're di not diabetic. Exactly. We know that and a lot of these, diabetes, it yeah. keeps you from healing as quickly. But if you're not diabetic mm -hmm. and you continue to Just see to, that, yep. that, that's an indicator. Yep. And so, and then with, with cancer, it's not, it's very, rarely painful. So it's not like you're going to come in like, oh, this spot is painful. You know, so you're just like, you just notice something and you're just like, okay, it's there, now it's grown. So it's like, usually one, like, you know, one of, one of the other questions other than, of course, if do you have a history of cancer, have, you know, have you noticed this, can uh, this lesion, what, this, this patch or, or, or this mole, how long has it been there? Have, has it grown? Because cancer, a lot of times, will start growing fast, but a lot of times you see it and then if it grows and you're like questioning, so why did it grow? Because it's all, I've had this since I was a kid and all, all of a sudden, it changes. So those are the things that you're always looking for, the, just more of the changes than anything else. Can the cancer on your foot spread to your legs? I mean, could cancer of the feet that goes unchecked cause an amputation? Yes. Yes, because then if it goes deep into it, I've actually seen uh, like when I've attended some of the lectures, because I haven't really have a lot of experience dealing with a lot of cancer patients. I've seen it where it, it starts out like a little mole. Next thing you know, it's like a little mass, but no one's ever checked it because they're thinking, oh, it's just maybe some two, like I'm not even the two, like a, a, a cyst or, a, a, or just a little mass. And next thing you know, it's, it's gotten so big. So it's not really gonna spread into the legs. It goes into your, um, uh, uh, nodes, lymph nodes, and that, because that's how cancer starts af affecting everything. So it actually will start spreading all over your body, but it's not like it's just it's not like oh here's cancer. It like, doesn't have to be localized no. to your feet no. once it gets once, started. Once it gets, you know, especially like the the malign the malignant melanoma type. Okay. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned um, ingrown toenails, mm -hmm. um, and I think that would probably um, uh, go as well for ulcers mm -hmm. that yeah. that come to your feet. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so. that's but all of those things happen because they go unchecked mm -hmm. when you get into real trouble. Mm -hmm. Like I I have um, gone uh, to places. Um, to um, uh, talk about diabetes and health, and um, uh, I'll have a person to come up to me and say, oh, I've got an ingrown toenail, and it really hurts, mm -hmm. but I'm scared to come to the doctor. Uh, 
Don't that be. is not a wise decision. Don't be. They, it, 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 it is painful to you then, and it only gets worse. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, it's not like the pain will eventually go away. And so if you have an ingrown toenail, you need to get to the doctor immediately uh, so that it can be um, remedied. And you don't want an ingrown toenail to get so bad that it could become cancerous, especially if you're diabetic. But then one of the other uh, possible problems with that, because I've seen it where uh, someone has had an ingrown toenail, they're trying, trying to treat it. That's, of course, people like just soak it and all this other stuff. So they keep on soaking, keep on soaking, but have never really seen a doctor, not, not their primary doctor, not, their, not a podiatrist. If it's been there for quite a long time, and this is sort of off topic, is because, you know, Af let's say the ingrown has, been, has, has had an infection for close to three, four months. Now it can actually go deep and actually go into your bone, which can now cause a bone infection, oh which my. now later down the line can cause an amputation. So a lot of times, you know, when, when, I, when I ask patients, like, oh, how long have you had the ingrown? And then we, uh, you know, we take an extra. I just want to confirm that, you know, if it's longer than two months, that I, I need to make sure that it hasn't gone deep, that it's now had gone into your bone and, and, can, and, and now has a bone infection. So there's other issues other than like, oh yeah, you have this cancerous lesion. Yeah, it could be, the skin can get the cancer, but now if you leave it alone for so long, you know, now you might have bone infection and then a possible amputation can occur. So I, and I think that's worth repeating. Bone infection, that's not easily remedied. No. If you leave your problems with your feet, particularly an ingrown toenail or even an ulcer, mm -hmm. and that gets into your bone, mm -hmm. that is not easily remedied. It's easy to remedy an ingrown toenail. Mm -hmm. Dr. Batuan can take care of that. And it's not a real painful process. The pain is when you get to the office. You, we remedy the pain here, and then you don't have to have that reoccurring over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So, because like uh, today, another sort of another off the topic again of not being cancer. This one patient, um, she went on a trip. She thought it was just that she just had a callus, and she was like walking around. She's like, oh, I thought it was just a callus. Uh, or a bunion, this mo as the lay people call it. So it's like a little callus on the, the bottom of her foot. And she's like, oh, it's painful, it's painful. Of course, she's diabetic. She comes in today. I press against it, and pus is coming out because oh it's my. been going on for a little bit. So again, please check your feet for any lesions, whether or not it's cancerous or not. Just make sure that it's, uh, you know. And I tell all my patients, I'm like, come in. Let me look at it. Let me evaluate it. Even if you think it's a bunion, as you all call it, but it's mostly a callus. But then it could develop into, now, it, now she has a wound under there because it was infected. There's pus under there. And it was like oozing out, like uh, almost like, to you it's not might, might be much, but it was close to about one cc to two cc, so which is about this much. But the lesion was like maybe this much. And, I'm, and I thought she might have stepped on something because I thought she had a splinter. Mm -hmm. And I was pressing and pressing, and I'm pressing, and it's like pus was coming out. So have, you know, go somewhere. So like, you know, we've mentioned in previous uh, uh, live chats that you, you know, have your primary doctor look at it. Or, and, and if you are actually one of our patients, and if you're not one of our patients, have us look at it, if, especially if you're diabetic. Let me look at it to see what is going on. Let me determine what we need to try to do for you, even if it is just a callus, but at least we know what we can try to do for you. I've had patients come in with blisters. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prevent foot amputations. So even with a cancerous lesion, if you know, I'm, because it can spread deep into your skin, and part of that can be and might need to be amputated because now that part of the, your that part of the foot has the cancer, and they have to cut it off before it starts spreading to the rest of the foot. And you had a picture, um, Dr. Noonan, of um, a Dr. foot with a mold on it. <laughs> no, Dr. Batua, <laughs> with the mold on it. But can you show them that so they can just kind of see? what it kind of looks like. If you can zoom in on that, there it is. So a lesion could be more like 
this little mole right here. See, it's it, the, the color's a little different. The shape is a little irregular, so it's not a circular shape. So those are the things that we're trying to uh, evaluate. And then, as you can tell, it's a little bit bigger than uh, the head of a, uh, an eraser. So, yep. Do we have any questions? Now's the time to ask before you make an appointment. Do you have any questions about uh, cancer uh, of the foot? Or do you have any questions about anything? Uh, we're diabetic uh, foot specialists here. And if you have any, we have any persons with diabetes listening, and you have some questions about maybe something that's going on with your feet right now, then we'd be happy to uh, answer it. You have the doctor right here, mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost you a thing. And it's actually best, even though you might have a question, it's actually best that you try to come in, make an appointment, so I can actually evaluate it. And if you have any questions, I can answer those questions you know, for you. Uh, a lot of times, most of the questions is like more of the numbness and, of course, the dry skin, uh, the swelling and all this other stuff. A lot of patients are more concerned about the uh, numbness of their feet. So the first thing uh, that I usually recommend to patients is make sure that your blood sugar is in good control because that actually helps uh, control that numbness and the, the uh, uh, possible complications that you're going through with your diabetes. Do we have any questions? Okay. I like my pink. <laughs> yes. It's uh, breast cancer awareness. That's right. And we want you to be aware because your health is of concern to us. Mm -hmm. If we don't have any questions, I think Dr. Batuan has explained cancer of the feet uh, very well. And you know what to look for now. You know what um, symptoms um, you might have. and. Uh, what needs to be done so that you can catch it before it spreads. Um, again, at Antioch, our uh, goal is to prevent toe, foot, and leg amputations. And um, not only do we uh, provide service here, but as a service to the community, we are continuing our Talking uh, Sugar live chats. And I'm available to come to your business or your organization to talk about diabetes. Uh, in addition to doing all the marketing for Antioch, I also am an ambassador uh, for the American Diabetes Association. So I'd love to come and talk to you about uh, living with diabetes, not dying with it. And I'll talk about um, food and exercise, and I'm gonna give you some ways to get up and move uh, and to exercise even if you're in a wheelchair. So um, we'd love for you to tune in uh, in November. We're live the first Wednesday of every month from 6 to 6.30. We'd love to have you join us. We thank you for joining us this evening. Have a blessed evening. Good night. Good night.